novel methods for biomimetics. Uh, we are very fortunate because there is no need to convince uh, you in importance of, uh, of uh, biomimetic approach uh, because you are already all involved in this, in this domain. But very often, very often, we need to convince industry. Why? Because uh, still there are no reliable uh, methods and procedures uh, to guarantee solid results. And that is why uh, practically every next project is started from scratch. And uh, uh, that is why we have uh, mostly only case studies without any uh, theory of methodology or methods. Um, Sorry. Uh, just uh, some words about our method Biotrees and our company Biotrees Limited. We are based in Bath uh, in uh, the UK, the city of Bath, and our work began 20, uh, approximately 20 years ago. At the, at the University of Bath, Mechanical Engineering Department. And before that, I worked for more than uh, 10 years on the same topic in Russia. Currently, we provide teaching, training, consulting, and uh, project-based uh, problem solving and inventing. Uh, there are, you, you see, there are some uh, companies which, uh, we, which we um, cooperate with and, uh, uh, yes, just a minute. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, this presentation, uh, this presentation will answer the following questions. Well, first of all, how to invent using solutions from living nature, and uh, what is Biotris translation method? Um, Biomimetic goal is to, to find uh, some helpful information from biology. Uh, we all know that, but uh, actually how to, to do this? how to find the most relevant biological prototypes among millions, millions of uh, biological systems and, uh, and species. How to be sure that uh, uh, your choice, which you have made uh, about the prototype, how to be sure that the, your choice uh, is, is uh, relevant and the best. How to translate uh, into engineering system uh, the, the solution which you have found and how to accommodate it in the existing uh, technological environment. Uh, so all these questions need to be, uh, need to be answered. I would like to begin my presentation with the <laughs> probably unexpected statement. Uh, actually, you see, uh, it is, uh, that you, you, you realize that any technology is, uh, it, it is, it is uh, widely, uh, widely accepted that biomimetic practitioners uh, used to say that nature is the best or at least nature is better than the current technology. But actually any technology is better than biology. Technology aims to compensate add abilities, open new realities, and uh, where you, you are unable to operate. Uh, actually, uh, I would say that uh, biomimetic engineering and biomimetics is really better in many cases, but if that were totally and always true, we would never uh, uh, need any technology. We would never need clothes, shelters, our houses, transport, 
medicine, dental services, any hand tools, telephone. So uh, actually, uh, technology very often is better um, than, than biology. And uh, still, still biomimetics insist that uh, there are advantages of biological systems. So why biology? Uh, what is missing in technology that we are looking for biology, uh, in biology? Well, actually, uh, do you know uh, a pump that operates up to decades, sometimes 70 or even 100 years without uh, spare parts, repair silently, 24 hours around the clock, seven days a week? Uh, so do you know such kind of uh, pump? Well, probably you already guessed that it's our heart. So it, it is pump which operates for decades uh, without stopping. And uh, it is easily to imagine. But do you know a pump that operates up to maybe thousands of years with the same features and also silently and uh, self-sufficiently without uh, without um, stopping and, and so on. And uh, obviously, <laughs> if you think, uh, just a minute, it will, be, it will be a tree. Every tree is such kind of a pump. And uh, uh, trees do exactly uh, this, this job, this work of uh, pumping lifting just in average 20 buckets of water up to the fifth floor, approximately 200 liters of water a day. And uh, you realize that trees are not tired after hundreds of years doing this, uh, this work with the roots, stems and leaves. And uh, uh, so why biology? Um, finally, we decided to, to, uh, to see what are the difference between biology and uh, technology and what are, uh, what are the, the positive and weak, weak parts. Uh, so strong and weak sides of both domains. So you, you, you can see here, uh, this is our, the results of our original web. Uh, the same, the same uh, challenges uh, which, which face uh, biology and <clears throat> technology has radically different strategies to, to, to resolve. In human technology, you, you can see that most of, uh, most of uh, solutions are based on use of uh, energy, energy and materials. And very small fraction is only information. In living nature, uh, there, there is, you see that uh, the approach is radically different. Uh, energy is very expensive. And also materials, materials and substance are also expensive. And most of uh, solutions are based on use of information. Currently, uh, our industries uh, and uh, evolution of technology goes in this direction. So it's just, uh, I would say, correct, correct direction. Uh, Actually, uh, I would uh, like to add here one example that, for example, uh, we, uh, so human technology produces hundreds, hundreds of various synthetic materials and plastics. And this causes the disaster, the terrible pollution of, of the environment. But biological systems use only two classes of polymers. Uh, they are proteins, and polysaccharides. And uh, that is why um, there are no problems with recycling. 
and uh, moreover many of these uh, many of these biological uh, biological polymers they are they are edible <laughs> they are used as, used as uh, food by by other uh, living systems uh, by the way biological polymers can be liquid gel uh, elastic solid plastic hard brittle any properties any properties due to the specific structures and um, now let us look at this slide uh, the result of our original study shows that uh, the overlapping of uh, living nature and technology uh, uh, problem solving when they face the same the same challenges the overlapping is only 12 12 percent and uh, uh, what does it mean it means that 88 percent uh, is hidden, still hidden uh, in biology and still uh, not used in, uh, by technology. And <clears throat> it, um, these 88% should be, should be discovered and applied for human engineering. This is great and uh, very impressive resource to, 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 be, to be used. As I already mentioned, uh, any technology aims making new systems and products uh, which are better than the existing ones. Actually, uh, actually, biometric case. We also uh, in biometric case we also do not need uh, make a copy of a paragon. We need better than a biological. We actually we need better than a biological prototype or paragon. So we <laughs> any copy cannot be better than its original uh, by definition. But at the same time, we need the, this uh, our product and this so-called copy or, or biomimetic product better than original. Let us just. Uh, consider, for example, artificial tools. If we need to make an artificial tools, we, and we decided to, to make it uh, as, as uh, close to the original as possible, so the perfect copy of, uh, of artificial tools. But do we need to copy, uh, do we need to copy carriers and, and toothache? Probably not. Uh, so it means that we, we should improve the uh, biological paragon. And if we take this burdock, this is, this is the, probably the most well-known example of biomimetic, uh, biomimetic case, bi biomimetic product. So uh, Velcro, the fastener, uh, which is also called uh, hook and loop fastener, is based on, on this um, plant which is called burdock and George de Mistral the inventor of this uh, product uh, uh, based, based his invention on, on uh, this plant which was attached to the fur of, of his dog but the original original case is hook and fiber because uh, the, the, the goal, the, the function yeah, of, uh, of burdock is to attach only once and uh, stay attached as long as possible, uh, stay attached to any animal. And uh, in human case, in human uh, product, we need uh, numerous, numerous attachment and detachment. And that is why uh, we cannot follow this. Uh, we, we cannot follow blindly this paragon, uh, and that is why, after ten years working, George de Mistral suggested hook and loop, hook and loop system, not hook hook and fiber. Um, 
Now, uh, what to search in biology? Actually, any adaptation is an invention. And uh, we uh, suggested our uh, method, which is called biotrees, uh, for, for transferring, for use in, in uh, biomimetics, for transferring biological effects into technology. It is called biotrees. Uh, bio, you, you realize what does it mean? Biology plus trees. Trees is uh, the Russian acronym, which is, you see, here it is uh, written in, in Russian, in Cyrillic, which is uh, translated as Teoria решения изобретательских задач. So that means theory of inventive problem solving. Uh, trees or uh, theory of inventive problem solving was developed in the former Soviet Union in Russia and uh, um, it was developed especially for technological challenges for uh, conventional engineering and uh, it is um, uh, specially developed to make inventive process systematic, reliable, predictive, repeatable and uh, just solid as, for example, as mathematics or physics. Uh, we specially adapted these system trees uh, for biology and biomimetic requirements and challenges. Uh, for the moment, we have found uh, the most Re re relevant biological laws and reformulated them for application in biomimetics. Uh, so now we use approximately 50 laws of, uh, of uh, biological laws, uh, which are suitable for biomimetic design. We uh, made them, we reformulated them uh, to make them compatible with engineering laws, rules, and the regulations, and thus made uh, them comprehensible for engineers and technologies. Uh, we also developed step-by-step -step, um, algorithm for the process of finding, selecting, and transferring of the solution from biology into technology. And uh, also I must mention that we use uh, Biotree's method not only for, uh, for technology. So you see here is the book uh, which, which, is, uh, which we use for technology. This is the inventor's uh, manual, but also for management. So this is our another book which is called biomimetic management. And also we use this, uh, we use this uh, method for psychology. You see, so this is book about uh, for uh, space psychologists. Uh, so now to clarify, what is the difference between the process of translating up to the word and interpretation of the very meaning? I'd like to present you one example. Uh, what is a white crow? How to understand, what does it mean? How to translate this uh, expression into some other languages, for example. What does it mean? I hope that there are no Russian-speaking or <laughs> uh, Russian-speaking uh, participants in this audience, and uh, otherwise, otherwise uh, they would explain immediately. So, how to translate? How to understand? What does it mean? The word, the the expression "white crow." Well, I have some books with me. White crow, white crow, you see? And uh, 
Let us have a look. What does it mean, white crow? I open. Now you see it is toy, black sheep. So it's totally different animal and totally different color and everything is totally different. So uh, you realize the meaning of of this uh, expression, black sheep. I presume that probably in your languages, uh, there are other uh, expressions and uh, I have the collection of such kind of expressions from, 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 uh, from other, uh, in other languages. So it means that some person, it's not an animal at all. It's not a white crow, it's not a black sheep, but it is the person who is sufficiently different from all the from other people and from normal somehow uh, so black sheep and white crow is the same and Beatrice methods is not to directly translate but it is interpretation uh, of the very meaning and it's not mimicking borrowing or inspiring Mm, uh, process, it's just the interpretation, interpretation from biology to engineering. Uh, so it means, so, uh, and we have uh, the procedures to interpret it step by step, uh, step by step, uh, interpret from biology into technology. Uh, Battery system has two main parts. Here you see. Uh, so the first part is uh, translate engineering uh, challenge into biological language. Uh, it comprises define the engineering challenge, then to choose relevant bi biological law and paragons that resolve similar challenges in similar conditions and context. And the next step is to translate from biological language back into engineering. Uh, define what stops you from adopting solutions from biology. And then using a contradiction max, matrix and inventive principles to implement biological solution in technology. Also, there are different, uh, some, some other um, some other tools which uh, which we offer. Uh, just one example. Uh, you know that uh, boats and uh, vessels they are very uh, vulnerable in the um, their propellers are uh, very vulnerable in the contaminated water waters contaminated with some uh, solid and fibrous uh, uh, items. So instead of propeller, uh, uh, it is very popular biomimetic solution uh, to use some, some sort of fish, fish tail uh, of some flippers. Mm. So instead of propeller, it can be used or suggested uh, some effector based on fish tail, but in this case, uh, the vessel or the boat will be oscillating, moving like this, yawning, yawning, moving from side to side like this. And it's not, uh, it's not mm, very convenient, especially when there are some uh, other devices uh, installed on, on these vessels, like for example, a video, video camera or there are passengers uh, and uh, or some other um, equipment so just having some boat with just yawning it's, it's not, not uh, acceptable uh, so uh, what what can be done uh, using uh, the contradiction matrix and uh, finding the biological law number five which is called merging or consolidation, we can make 
uh, some some boat or we can make some uh, some system which doesn't uh, which doesn't exist in uh, natural in nature we can create by system something like catamaran uh, making these two artificial fishes if you wish uh, uh, instead of making a single body vessel or uh, we, we can make two effectors two tails two flippers working uh, to compensate the harmful effect of union so working in this way in this case in this case uh, there would not be a, a undesirable oscillating of the vessel or, or yawning. Uh, so, uh, I just want uh, to say that uh, you can find uh, the algorithms, uh, algorithms and uh, uh, other tools in our uh, publications. So, Inventor's Manual, just a minute, Inventor's Manual, uh, which is available in five languages, uh, Biomimetic, uh, Biomimetic Management, which is uh, available in two languages, uh, English and French, uh, and the deck of cards, trees cards and buy trees cards. I just show you. So this is just this deck of cards uh, for business games and for training sessions. And also uh, our educational uh, video films on buy trees methods. So these are our uh, so you will find the detailed, detailed algorithms, tools, and methods of uh, biotries in all these books and learning facilities. And uh, so this is uh, everything what I wanted to uh, present today. And uh, this is just uh, some picture which I just would like briefly to comment. So this uh, natural horse living horse is our paragon. Uh, we need to make some kind of artificial uh, technological, technical horse. And uh, currently um, the inspiration mostly is used to make this transfer from nature to technology. And Biotree's methods allow us to make harness for this Pegasus, this inspiration. So this is what we would like to uh, present. Thank you for your attention. And here you see our uh, uh, addresses, sites, and, uh, and you are well, welcome to contact. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nicole. Uh, it was an interesting, crisp presentation on Biotris. Uh, so I invite uh, Professor Tripti Patel, uh, the moderator, to take uh, on the Q&A activity. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Patil, you're muted. Please unmute. Uh, I'm, uh, I, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I do have a few questions here, and uh, one of them comes to me uh, how to create knowledge management systems of such abstractions of real life case studies for the biological world and the engineering world. That's from Abhishek. So, uh, please, uh, it, it was uh, something wrong with, uh, uh, with the connection. Could you repeat uh, the question? I would, I would love to repeat. I would love to repeat the question: How to create knowledge management systems of such abstractions of real-life case studies for biological from biological world 
and the engineering world. So the, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Dr. Nicole, you may also see in the Q&A uh, link the there's, same question. There is one more question here. Is batteries useful for dinosaurs and ancient animals? Yes, uh, the, the point yes. is uh, we, have, uh, we have detailed uh, structures uh, to, extract, uh, to extract biological knowledge and uh, to, to interpret it into, into uh, technology. The, the point is that it is very, how say, stepwise and detailed uh, procedure which is uh, published in, uh, in, in, this, uh, in this book and it is just explained everything there. One more question, uh, how can batteries components help in designing artificial tissues and organs? Please, could you? How can biotris components help in designing artificial tissues or organs? Uh, uh, biotris methods uh, uh, allow to, to operate and to work at any level, at cell level, at uh, tissue level, organ, uh, organism, uh, and, uh, uh, well, for example, uh, we, um, we collaborated with uh, uh, Philips, with the, the, the company Philips, and we created the microfluidic pump based on uh, cilia, you, you know, uh, the tiny, tiny bristles, which uh, operates like a, a, a microfluidic pump. And uh, we created uh, this uh, solution based on, on, on this tissue. Uh, ciliar, uh, ciliar epidermis, and uh, it, it worked, it worked, yeah. Thank you so much. And there's one more question here. Enlighten us up, uh, and give us some information on golden ratio, which is followed by uh, nature design towards modern and world designs, or for the, uh, you know, for machine designing. So uh, they need to understand the golden ratio, which is followed, by the nature designers. Uh, there's one more question here. How to create uh, uh, any such reports of bios uh, methodologies for regenerative tissue engineering? Yes. Well, the the uh, how is it the quality of 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 uh, of, of so sound sorry. Very, very very poor I'm I'm really sorry and it's very pardon me to to how is it pardon me pardon me for that uh, um, uh, batteries method methodologies can be used for regenerative tissue engineering yes yeah yeah yes yes sure uh, uh, the the point is that uh, Biomimetic, uh, biomimetic technology can, uh, can comprise different proportions of uh, technological and biological, uh, biological parts. And uh, uh, it allows to find the, the uh, correct and the right proportion between, between uh, biology and technology. In, and uh, amalgamate, amalgamate these, uh, these parts in the most precise uh, uh, in the most precise proportion. The point is that uh, these proportions are uh, detailed, discussed, for example, in, 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 this, in this book. And uh, uh, so it is, it is explained in this book. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Nicole. Uh, we ran out of time. So uh, otherwise, uh, we could have continued with the Q&A. Uh, maybe I will request the organizers to take the questions privately to you and uh, take your responses. So yeah, sure, it was sure, a sure. wonderful session again. Uh, so thank you. And uh, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Uh, thank you very we much. Will... Uh, I, I, um, I'm uh, always open to um, uh, and ready to answer your, your questions. Uh, uh, the participants can 
just uh, write uh, th these questions and uh, I, I will be happy to, to answer them. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, so we are moving on to the next uh, uh, speaker. Uh, mm -hmm. So I uh, gladly welcome Dr. Naveen Kumar from IIT Roper. So he's going to speak about uh, painless needle technology this afternoon. And uh, Dr. Naveen Kumar is an associate professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at IIT Roper. Prior to joining IIT Roper, he was working as a research scientist uh, at Stevens Institute of Technology, New Jersey and USA. He has completed master's in mechanical engineering from IIT Kharagpur and a PhD from IIT Delhi in the mechanical engineering discipline. Dr. Naveen Kumar's research interests are related to both theoretical and experimental aspects of mechanics and dynamics of nanobiological and biomaterial structures. Bone properties, characterization, biomedical engineering, biomechanics, biomedical instrumentation, smart structures and materials for diagnosis and condition and monitoring. In particular, he is interested in these areas, uh, biomaterial characterization, such as uh, experimental and simulation of nano and biomaterials and structures, active vibration control and fault diagnosis. Uh, he has several publications and uh, patents on his uh, name. Uh, we are looking forward to your interesting session, uh, Dr. Naveen Kumar, uh, over to you. Uh, Dr. Naveen Kumar was facing some difficulty in projecting his uh, PPT. Uh, Dr. Naveen Kumar, you have to unmute yourself. First. Yeah, I have unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I'm able to hear. Thanks you. for my introduction. Uh, I will see. I can, I think, share. Uh, yeah, can you, you see can my share. slide? Yeah, yeah. yeah I right? can share can your you whole screen. Yeah. Yeah, so just a minute. Yeah, can you see now yeah. my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are okay. able and, to see yours. And so, so you can hear me. Uh, uh, we, would we be able to see you? Yeah, I can uh, just a minute, uh, just a minute. I am not very familiar with these. Uh, just a minute. Yeah, I can uh, just. Switch on. Uh, you have start your video. You have to click that. Start your video. Yeah, start your Bella. video. Yeah, I have a uh, camera. Uh, just a minute. Spotlight video, but why it is advanced? Enabled Tinder. But uh, it is not showing. Start my video, but it is showing cross. So maybe some issue with the connectivity of the. Yeah. Uh, you have to select the camera probably. Did you have have you selected the camera? Camera drop down menu. Is there a drop down menu? Just below the black screen, you can see a drop down menu. Just a minute. <clears throat> hmm. So, uh, camera, yeah, I am selecting, but nothing is not taking anything. Camera column is blank. I think we so, have to, uh, uh, yeah, we have to continue with this. This should be fine. Uh, yeah, we okay. may start the presentation. Yeah, please. Just a minute. I Sorry. will try one more time uh, so that uh, I think it's not taking my camera. Touch. Uh, Uh, fine, sir. I think we can move on with the presentation. No. Okay. So I am sorry. I cannot. Uh, you cannot see me. I can see you people. So I am extremely sorry. Uh, so yes. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Balachandran, for your uh, introduction, and also my previous speaker. I am. I can see you here. Yeah, so my work is uh, more on the biomechanical aspect of the nature, and I will uh, particularly talk about the uh, painless needle, which uh, organizer has requested me. But I will also talk about one or two more topics which we used to work. So here I am in uh, IIT Roper, and three aspects I will talk about the spider web, uh, the stinger of the honeybee or wasp, and the uh, mosquito because they have uh, some uh, some uh, this uh, they have they are the they have the micro needle type of structures in particular the wasp and the mosquitoes. Now uh, I am coming from 
so here this is uh, my institute which is located to north of india chandigarh uh, near 40 km away from chandigarh so newly building come up uh, so that's a 500 acres of uh, building yes so i will talk about the spider web why i will talk about the spider web it's a smart structure has lot of capabilities lot of engineering applications are there and then i will also i will talk about the wasp and honey bee stinger which has the uh, engineering applications and uh, i will talk about the mosquito painless piercing so uh, if we talk about the uh, the the uh, the spider web then it has the wonderful architect and uh, unique uh, combination of uh, geometry and mechanics and then uh, it's uh, it's the constitute of the uh, silk uh, thread actually is a protein and it can withstand the effect of uh, tremendous kinetic energy of the flying prey which sustain under windy condition uh, storm and rainy condition also so it's i mean uh, it can sustain but yes extreme uh, storm it's definitely cannot strain and uh, it's uh, absorb the uh, dissipation energy vibration transmission mechanics is there and uh, there is there is a sensing uh, the spiders uh, are sensing through those vibration which are transmitted through the webs so that's the capability this spider has so now coming to uh, let me see if i can run this video so this is a slow motion uh, video of the spider who is weaving this uh, their uh, their web so uh, here you can see that uh, how nicely she is uh, putting this web uh, and you can also notice after some time that uh, these webs uh, has different types of structure i will also convey this and they are you can see this thread uh, extremely parallel and also uh, this uh, video is uh, about uh, 10% of the actual motion so and uh, they have nice uh, claws so uh, this uh, you can see that uh, the actual video when uh, this uh, so she is making uh this uh, web at this speed and they are she is putting the parallel uh, threads so that's the uh, she has the capability and uh, then uh, you can see that uh, during the even the stormy conditions she cannot uh, this uh, web can be which can withstand a lot of a uh, lot of kinetic energy and uh, the moisture which is coming up on this so that's also this is type of structure has those capabilities also so this come out from this this study that uh, we have studied uh, so what we have done is very simple experiment uh, we have done so we have taken the uh, the um, uh, the web on a, a substrate and uh, then we have cut it and then uh, this sample uh, we have uh, taken uh, for the uh in the lab for the testing so uh so here these figures are showing the um uh, sem images of the uh two type of threads are there these are the radial threads the thicker one and uh, these are the spiral threads so two type of threads are there in the spider web and they have their own functions so that's so we have tried to explain here so radial thread is a uh, thicker one uh, whereas the spiral thread is thinner one and they have the gun point gum points the spiral threads and you can see this uh, joint is a, not a single joint it's a number of threads are joined together and uh, so that's the make this uh, structure so wonderful and uh, so it can sustain um, uh, such a such a stormy condition but yes of course in uh, extreme storm it's break so we have tried to see its uh, is, uh, is, is, is the hardness or the modulus uh, so what we have done we have used the indentation uh, method and we indent on this uh, the the radial thread and the spiral thread and try to see what is the penetration depth with respect to the load applied so we have applied the same load near about 25 uh, micro newton and uh, you can see this the penetration depth in a spiral is more than the radial thread right so 
so it means the spiral thread has uh, the the hardness of the radial thread is more than the spiral thread, uh, and that has some application in the structure. Uh, so what we have done more, uh, we try to find out the damping of this structure. So uh, what we have done is. Uh, we have uh, put uh, the laser uh, uh, laser spot or laser vibrometer spot and try to find out this uh, the damping of this structure so that we can get uh, we try to find out the damping of the radial as well as the spiral thread so because they have uh, the function in the absorbing those uh, those vibration or those stormy conditions so what we have find out that the spiral threads are having higher damping than the radial thread. So you can see these two curves. So which curve settled down quickly has uh, the higher damping uh, if we talk about the uh, investigation of damping in the structure. So, and then we also find out the natural frequency of this thread, but damping is, you can, you can see this damping is of the radial thread is higher than the spiral thread. And in the previous, we have told that uh, the, uh, the um, the uh, the the uh, the modulus of the spiral uh, thread was uh, uh, the modulus of the spiral thread was uh, less than the radial thread, right? So this uh, contrasting characteristic of this radial and spiral threads are uh, give them a unique structure capabilities. So like uh, so here, if I go back to my slide here, so yes, so this radial thread and spiral thread, so radial thread give the uh, strength to this thread, whereas the spiral thread give the damping so that uh, why damping is needed? Because when a insect strike on the web, uh, it's generally strike on the spiral thread only because spiral threads are more in number than the radial threads. So poverty is more the striking of the insect. And that's why, uh, because this having the higher damping, it absorbs those vibrations which this insect has or those kinetic energy which this insect has when it's striking. So that's the capability of the uh, the uh, spiral threads and uh, but radial thread provide more strength to this uh, to this structure. So both the radial and spiral thread has those unique capabilities that give this structure uh, such a stability. And but even you can see that how quickly this uh this uh, she can uh, weave the such a structure now coming to so we have published this work in uh, general of mechanical behavior biomedical engineering but the important thing is that these three students were my btech student undergraduate students and they have done this work uh, first uh, then this first student was my postdoc uh, who has written this paper nicely and we got this nice publication but what i am convey to i try to convey you that even BTEC students sometimes do very good work and they are also useful for a small work. And uh, this work was uh, by, by uh, Polytech uh, in Focus magazine. They have highlighted this work and uh, Indian newspaper also give some, uh, some, uh, some uh, space for this work. Then uh, uh, also what happening is this, uh, some of these uh, spiders are are cannot uh, hear. Uh, so what happening is uh, this uh, the the vibration signals. Uh, sorry, this, some of these spiders are blind, so they cannot uh, see this where this uh, the 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 insect is striking. But they they can sense those vibration which are transmitted through this uh, through this uh, webs. So you can see that when a a a, a insect is striking, when it's insect is striking, so she come to that point directly. So this is a slow motion picture, which we have uh, here, but uh, yes, she directly come to that point. So she can sense those vibrations which are transmitted to her uh, because she used to sit in the center and she get the sense from this vibration which are get transmitted from uh, these thread and then she move in that particular direction. She don't uh, move here and there to locate the uh, the prey. So that's the capability she has, and these uh, these web has are transmitting those vibrations. 
So like here we have uh, shown uh, it's uh, more clearly that how she will quickly respond to those uh, insect and that insect uh, she get to know from the vibration which are transmitted to this web. So then uh, what we have done is, so uh, this, uh, the web which I am showing is uh, in our lab. Uh, so then we uh, put a lot of insect on this uh, web at different locations and try to see how this uh, the the uh, vibration get transmitted from uh, from the different location to this uh, to the center so what we have done is uh, we have put this laser vibrometer and uh, located uh, the those insect positions and try to see uh, when we are these vibration get transmitted through different junctions to spiral thread to the radial thread. So uh, th that's how we have done this experiment and we try to see this how this vibration gets signal gets transmitted. So here these curves are showing the junction different junctions how this vibration gets signals are coming at this different junctions so J1 to J29. Uh, similarly, the spiral thread, the radial thread, how these uh, vibrations are coming on those particular thread or particular junctions. And then what we have done is we have tried to see this, how this vibration transmittability is happening. So uh, based on this transmissibility, she get to know that uh, the, uh, the insect is located at those locations. So then we have find out those uh, transmittability of this jun different junctions and uh, different thread also. So now, so so this uh, work by 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 using this transmissibility signal or the signal transmissibility, uh, the spider get to know this location of the prey, right? So uh, that work which we have uh, published in Philosophical Transaction uh, A. Uh, structure property influence on the prey retention on the spider web. Uh, it's a really very uh, oldest uh, journal in, the, in English speaking and uh, very uh, good journal. Now uh, coming to this uh, the needle, the painless uh, needle. So first I will show you this. What is the wasp and honeybee? How they bite? Yes, biting is not painless, but yes. There is something else which creating a pain, which I want to convey, and how this mechanics is happening. So when uh, what is the uh, the 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 stinger? This is a this the stinger is can be you can see in the top picture. And when she threatened, feel threatened uh, by the prey prey or uh, so she take out this stinger. You can see this in this video, and she try to bite uh, the prey. So uh, but. Uh, Biting and inserting the the uh, venom is a a process. So what we have done is uh, we have taken the CT scan of uh, this uh, stinger. So here this is showing the stinger, which is hardly uh, two or three mm uh, length, and uh, this is the uh, honeybee stinger. Now what is there? The honeybee stinger is is it seems to be a cylindrical yes it is cylindrical but it's having a two part what is there it has the uh, the lower portion and the upper portion lower portion has the track like or rail like of tracks which is known as lancets right so what is happening the upper portion is sliding on this on these lancet and this way, the venom get inserted in the prey. So what she do, she, when she get threatened, she take out this and she slide the upper portion on the lower portion. And because during this sliding process, there is a negative pressure seems to get generated. And this venom flow from here to here at the orifice and there is an opening way through which she insert the venom. Now uh, the, the process, this process of sliding and inserting is not painful, but inserting when she insert, inserting the venom, 
that when the process of inserting the venom create the pain uh, in the biting when she bite so but this the 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 sliding and this inserting is really a very uh, wonderful process and has lot of applications so then we also try to see how this structure is made of so we can have a epi uh, epical reason or basal reason and try to see how this hardness and modulus vary we find out that uh, it is not so hard at the tip uh, but it is hard at the base because uh, this give them the uh, structure stability uh, otherwise it's bend at the base and then one more thing which was interesting is that a uh, biologist has reported that when this honey bee bite she take its stinger at certain angle from the vertical and then she bite means uh, she has certain pattern to put it a stinger certain angle from the vertical and then she bite so that uh, finding of the biologist we try to understand why this is happening so what we have done is uh, we have developed a model finite element model uh, mathematical model you can say and then uh, we try to see at different angles how this stress which are coming on this stinger vary so you can see then we have plotted the uh, stress on the y axis and the penetration x uh, angle at the x axis you can see when penetration angle is near about minus 10 to 10 degree this stress on this stinger is very uh, very low so so for 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 getting this information it means she keep this angle so that the stresses which are coming on this stinger during the biting process should be low otherwise it may break so that's one another thing which we have seen in this uh, study and then based on this uh, natural thing we try to see that how this venom is uh, flowing so when this uh, this sliding is happening so negative pressure develop here and then venom is flowing so based on this we have uh, suggested that we can have a micro syringe needle where p filled uh, drug can be there and then uh, you just slide this upper uh, portion and then this uh, drug can be inserted so that's another uh, uh, way of uh, analyzing the things and then this we get this publication in uh, in the uh, in the uh, scientific report and then uh, my last uh, topic the mosquito painless piercing how it is happening so what is happening is mosquito has unique capabilities that uh, what is uh, she has they have the labium so they have this labium or proboscis the top portion of this labium is known as proboscis they by they vibrate it with certain frequency during this uh, penetration during this biting and they also sprinkle the nubbing agent that's why you never feel that any biting is happening so two things they are do so they keep on vibrating at certain frequency means it is not quasi static process and then also they have the nubbing agent so that you and and they also have the co2 sensor which they locate the uh, blood vessels so this is the internal structure uh, so this is the labium which the uh, they insert in the dermis and uh, it's a hollow structure and take out the blood suck out the blood from this thing right so that's how this phenomena is happening you can see that uh this is the so she is uh, inserting but not quasi static she is having uh, some vibrations and then uh, once she is uh, located the blood vessels so you can see the proboscis which is still vibrating and she take out the full blood All right uh, so that's dr navin yeah. uh, for want of time in next two minutes if you could submit a yeah yeah i am i am just uh, about to uh, so what is happening so why we have taken the se image of the labium and uh, this is the structure of labium hollow structure it is hardly 40 to 50 micrometer and what we have done we have done the indentation on, on the surfaces quasi static as well as the dynamic so uh, we have taken near 100 points in the quasi static and dynamic near uh, 7 8 points 
but interesting we find out that uh, the when we uh, map those uh, values on this uh, proboscis we find out the modulus and hardness is very high at the these edges in comparison at the tip which we were thinking that uh, this may be very hard so uh, we we uh, we have repeated so many uh, experiment and then we concluded that why this is very a high stiffness or high modulus at here because uh, this the bulging or the corrugation of at this edge give them uh, they need the high stiffness because when they penetrate it may bend so that's the here that's the point here where uh, they need the higher stiffness so that it should not bend so that's why uh, this uh, the modulus or hardness is not not uniformly distributed throughout this and then uh, in dynamic condition they change their uh, modulus uh, because this is viscoelastic so you can see that uh, the loss modulus and the are changing uh, when they that's why they are keep on vibrating so adjust those value value of modulus uh, we got again this paper in the journal uh, one of the journal and then uh, this uh, the inspiration is that uh, you can have uh the the uh, graded material gradient across this length and then uh, you should have a little vibrations uh at very slow speed say 5 hertz and then you can easily insert the uh, the, the drug uh, which may not uh, may not uh, cause so much pain so that's the uh, ins uh, inspiration which is uh, come out from here or you can suck out the blood so such a some or my funding agency or my collaborator which we work uh, with them uh, drdo dst and uh, uh, trauma has some of my group members i want to thank them all my students and staff for helping me in this work so that's all from my side thank you i am taking uh, maybe one or two minutes i am very sorry yeah thank you dr navin very very interesting presentation and also you are almost on time so may i request uh, dr tripti patel if there is uh, time one or two questions so uh, one of the questions thank you so much is uh, uh, is uh, what is the standard deviation on 6 degree angle of penetration is it uh, not within the margin of error uh, this is for the mosquito uh, uh, needle uh, no we have not seen in the mosquito needle but we have seen in the uh, wasp when she bite so she keep some angle uh, and that angle is near about uh, minus 10 degree to plus 10 degree uh, which we find out by taking these different but yes what is the standard deviation because we have not taken all the angles we have taken the major angles like 90 degree 45 degrees and then uh, 10 degree plus 10 degree minus 10 degree so yes we may not have uh, so minute data about it There is one more question here. What was the indentation method used to uh, for the spider web experiment? Yeah. So uh, what we have done in the spider web, uh, uh, yeah, I will show you. Uh, so it's a nano indentation or indentation. Uh, here the nano why it is the load is of nano or micro newton. So what is there? Do you have two transducer in that machine? one is the load transducer and one other one is the displacement transducer so when you apply the load it uh, the, some penetration has happened in the material and then those penetration depth you can measure by using these two transducers so load displacement once you get the load displacement from load displacement curve now you can interpret lot of uh, parameters like uh, modulus hardness or any other parameters Once again, uh, thank you, Dr. Navin, for this excellent session. Uh, in fact, we ran out of time; otherwise, we would have taken some more questions. Uh, so, thanks for joining us, and uh, thanks for your time. Thank you. And, thanks a lot. And thank uh, the uh, moderator uh, for uh, moderating the Q and A session, and also the co-hosts for uh, coordinating this in an excellent manner. So, thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Patel. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, everybody. Uh, thanks, Nikolai, and thanks, Dr. Naveen. Thanks, uh, uh, Balachandran sir, and Chukti ma'am. So uh, here we uh, reach the end of the session. It was really interesting, encouraging session.
so we will say, uh, immediately log off the session and uh, we'll log into the next session so that the guest can join there i think jaychandra sir has joined so he has to again re log in in the next session so i'm uh, we are closing the session now yes thank you see you yeah <laughs>